In this video, we're going to be taking a look at forces in equilibrium. We're going to talk about it conceptually so we understand the idea of equilibrium. And then we're going to do the quick basic way of drawing the diagram, including the numerical values. For the second half of the video, we're going to set it up a little bit more detailed, showing all the sum of forces on each of the axes. So first of all, a quick and easy definition for equilibrium is something where the net force equals zero newtons. The net force is the total of all the forces acting on an object. So zero newtons indicates that all of your forces are basically canceling each other out, or there's possibly no forces acting on it at all. Now, when that's the case, two possible things could be happening. One, if the object is already at rest, and then the net force is zero newtons, then it is going to remain at rest. That is the first case of equilibrium. The second case is, is that if the object is already in motion and then the forces become balanced at a certain point and your net force is zero, then it's going to be going at a constant velocity. Either of the cases, your acceleration is zero meters per second squared. All right, so now we're going to set up our diagrams with the numerical values. Like I said, this is like the more basic, quick and easy way to do it. So we're going to draw our diagram first. That is always your first and most important step. So we have our force of gravity pulling straight down. And it looks like we have two ropes pulling on this speaker. So we have two forces of tension pulling upwards. For our force of gravity, we're going to take our mass and multiply it by 9.8 and that's going to give us our force of gravity 98 newtons we see that two forces of tension are pulling up on the speaker it looks like they're sharing the load equally so we're going to take that 98 and divide it by two which means each side is pulling up with 49 newtons of force for our second one, we have an FG as usual pulling straight down, but this object is being supported by a surface. It's on the ground, so the ground is pushing straight up perpendicular to the surface. That is the normal force. According to our description, this person is pushing. So we have an applied force to the left, and because this object is moving at a constant velocity and is in equilibrium. We know everything is gonna be balanced out and it appears to be sliding. So there is also a force of kinetic friction. For Fg, same as before, we're gonna take that mass and multiply it by 9.8 and we're gonna get 196 Newtons. Because there is no vertical movement, we know that our normal force is going to cancel out our force of gravity and is also going to be 196 newtons. So based on our description, we know that the person is pushing with 250 newtons of force. And because everything is supposed to sum up to zero and all cancel out, we know the opposing force to our FA is also going to be, whoops, excuse me, is also going to be 250 newtons as well. All right, so that concludes the quick and easy way to draw our diagrams and include our values for forces in equilibrium. And now for the second part of the video, we're going to fill it out in some more detail with some of forces in the X and Y direction. Now that we're doing the more detailed version of analyzing these problems, the first step you're going to do is still to complete a force diagram. So we've already completed the force diagram, so I'm not going to repeat that. But now you want to make sure you take a look at the sum of the forces in the X direction and the sum of forces in the Y direction. If you take a look at our first picture, we don't have any forces in the horizontal direction, the X direction. So we don't even have to uh, consider that one. All of our forces are in the Y direction. So what I'm going to do is make sure I'm clear about which, which direction is positive and negative. It's pretty common that up would be positive and down would be negative. So what I'm going to do 
is show that the sum of all of my forces combined are the two FTs in the positive direction minus FG in the negative direction, which is going to equal zero Newtons. Okay, the nice part about having forces in equilibrium is we know for the sum of forces in the X direction and the Y direction is always going to be zero. So if you were to do a problem like this, uh, what you would do is you would do MG for your force of gravity. And then you would have um, 2FT for your force of tension. And for this type of problem, more likely than not, you'd probably have to solve for the force of tension. So all you would do is you would plug in the mass. You would plug in G 9.8. And then you would solve for the force of tension. All right, now on to our second problem, which is gonna be a little bit more complicated. We are going to have the sum of forces in the X direction and the sum of forces in the Y direction. And we do have some forces along both of the axes. So for the sum of forces in the X direction, we are going to have FA minus FFK and then again equals zero because we know that our MA or our force on the other side is going to be zero for anything that's in equilibrium. Now what I typically do for what I do for the positive and negative is I usually do the everything that is trying to help the object move or that is trying to make it move is positive and anything that's opposing it is negative. So my FA I called everything in this direction positive and then I called everything in this direction negative, which was the force of friction. Technically, you could have everything to the right being positive and everything to the left being negative. It really doesn't matter as long as your different signs are in opposite directions. Okay, so from there, there wouldn't be too much going on. You, you would know that your FA is 250 Newtons minus your force of kinetic friction equals zero Newtons. And then depending on the problem, you might have to break down the force of kinetic friction into mu times normal force, and then solve for the coefficient of kinetic friction or something along those lines. Now for the sum of forces in the Y direction, we are gonna go with the same rules we went for in the first one, which everything up is positive and everything down is negative. And again, that equals zero because there is no vertical movement or acceleration and everything is in equilibrium. So we don't really have to think twice about if the other side is gonna be zero or not. And then for this one, the more technical way of solving for Fn would just be doing Fn minus your mg, your mass times 9.8 equal to zero. All right, so that concludes the video on how to set up forces in equilibrium with the concept, doing the more basic, quick and easy way, and then also the more detailed technical version of setting it up with sum of forces in the X and Y direction. Thank you for watching and listening.